welcome back to advertising is dead uh, we talked to piyush piyush welcome to the show hey thank you thank you so much varun it's a very interesting concept of advertising it dead so yeah hoping to have a good conversation with you you know i, I want to kind of start off by you know taking like a broad perspective on the space right now if you look at the entire virtual experiences the metaverse all these words which we would not even utter let's say even 3 years ago <laughs> uh, are suddenly like an everyday piece for us but people still don't understand where this market really lies today so if you had to take a broad perspective on where the market is today um how would you kind of place this entire space i think it's it's a i would say it's a transitioning market uh, if i would uh, use a term and uh, you know people are trying to figure out what next from here obviously two years back uh, everything was very different virtual was you know uh, for a very certain set of people and product but now when people have got used to different types of virtual experiences uh, i think it's it's uh, people are trying to transition from uh, from a basic virtual experience to can i kind of go beyond uh, uh, basic to immersive right so it's it's more of that if you ask me uh, let's see where it evolves but uh, you know and between virtual events and w- metaverse i think uh, virtual events is going to be part of it you know i can give you some data on uh, what some of the marketing managers across the globe are talking about it uh, mm-hmm. uh, so whenever you want i can share that with you and and then the next piece is the evolving it uh, to metaverse so yeah i think it's a transition phase let's see how it all shapes yeah. up I think we've actually given given me a great step one and step two to go with this conversation. So um, let's first talk about what you just mentioned. What are the the broader marketing folk kind of focusing on working towards, and then we'll we'll build up towards the metaverse. Sure, sure. So uh, you know, because we've been in business for about twenty five years, and we work with some of the largest brands globally, right? Not in the tech space, but uh, you know, we've uh, have people in the BFSI, pharma, and so on and so forth. Uh, and when we were uh, transitioning from a service organization to you know getting into the virtual events platform we thought we we'll let let us first do a deep dive on what marketing managers across the globe think uh, you know about virtual event as a platform right and, and then after that you know we did a survey uh, very recently after people have got used to virtual events uh, and are they going back to you know physical events completely right so Uh, to give you some data roughly about 35% of a marketing budget gets spent on events which is used to get spent on physical events uh, as per the conversation that we've had what the saying is about 5 to 7% of it will still continue to be spent on uh, virtual events which which if you look at it is significantly big it's a you know it's about a 100 billion dollar industry expected to go to about 600 700 billion dollar in next mm-hmm. about Six years or so. That's what the projection is globally. Right? So, hence, you know, it's now becoming, you know, a very conscious effort has been made by the marketing managers to have this as part of uh, uh, their marketing budgets. And I'm talking not just India. I'm talking globally. Right. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, in US, the adoption is uh, adoption is a lot more. I think people believe a lot more in that space. Plus, the market where there is a lot of uh, you know different languages which are being spoken. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the South America market or the APAC region, right? I think uh, it just helps where you don't have to do different conferences in different languages. Virtual event allows you to kind of you know uh, do live translations and you know. give the same content at the same time to the yeah. uh, to all kind of audience so i think that's that's how the virtual event will pan out as we go on that's what it looks like from a marketing ma- marketing managers across the globe yeah you know um, i want to pick a point on this um before we move to talking about the metaverse um one of the sure. things and this time talking pure consumer side right from pure consumer side what i have really noticed is there were some events which in many ways now in hindsight makes so much more sense as virtual events so <laughs> product launches you're talking press conferences you're talking about you know, some of those things where actually you can look at them and say okay this actually looks a lot cleaner it seems easier to distribute you can connect to a far wider consumer base uh, by doing it virtually um so obviously that's mm-hmm. one set of things um but especially over the last two years what have you kind of seen in terms of the evolution of what tool sets brands have really asked for because as you kind of worked on the platform and 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 worked with brands on it what have you kind of seen as brands say, okay this is these are the kind of things that we actually need to make our engagement a lot 
uh, lot better with the consumer and uh, what have you kind of turned around is this is also stuff that you need which you might not have realized yet i am glad you asked that question because uh, you know when we first started off and what we finally have it I, I think we've also evolved basis the feedback that people have given right i i remember when we launched on 4th of may 2020 i don't think i remember anything any date so you know clearly <laughs> uh, than than for 4th of may uh, what we what we always wanted to do was make it experiential you know we wanted to make sure that when people come in uh, there is that wow effect that happens that oh this looks beautiful right uh, the second thing we wanted to do was make it engaging that people should not get bored you're there are you trying to you know are you doing different things and the third thing we wanted it to be you know uh, the third pillar for us was data so we kind of made sure that uh, we collect a lot of data learn from it and make the experience more personalized so that's that's what how we started off uh, and uh, you know one thing that you know the brands kept coming back and saying how do we engage more right mm. so the beautification part of us taken care of the brands love you know the platform and i think that's what made a difference of uh from an experience point of view uh but the brands kept coming in saying okay how do i engage with my audience a lot more you know can we kind of do uh, a two way communication can we do video con- a video conversation without logging out of the platform and going somewhere else right uh how do i know my customer a little more how do i kind of make the experience more customized right uh, so it it started moving in that direction and we do you know if you look at it all kind of events happened in these two years you know from like you said from a product launch to a dealer meet to a, a focus customer discussion to a annual general meet to to a, a multi country uh, conference everything happened right mm-hmm. uh, and in each of these there were different requirements that coming in keeping the uh, you know the engagement part con- absolutely consistent so hence what we did was we started off with basic chat then came in that okay can you kind of move into audio conversation so we integrated mm-hmm. audio to it then came in that okay uh, you know people are so used to two way communication can that be added so we kind of added that then came in that okay we want closer discussions so we kind of added group discussions to the whole thing right uh, then we said okay for entertainment you know we need something more right so we added a selfie booth a mosaic wall uh you know uh, we added music to it uh, we have added emoticons to it uh, uh, you know and then said okay all this is fine you know uh, but a, a full day conference becomes boring for people so what do we do mm-hmm. then we added uh, you know the whole gamification uh, to it where you can actually take a break play a game there's a leaderboard and all of that so so while we were doing all of this what we realized was that from when we look at from a brand point of view this was okay right now when you look at from a consumer point of view the challenge from a consumer was when you when he or she would log into a virtual platform would feel a little lost okay what yeah. do i do now right there are thousand it shows there are 5000 people on the platform or a 50000 people on the platform now how do i go who do i network with who do i interact with right so we didn't even start uh, so what yeah actually right so what we did was we launched our own uh, bot called versa you know so what she what she you know what was the focus was to basically enable smooth uh, conversation or a smooth transition of an individual from physical to virtual so when you log in to the platform what she would do is she would say you know what this is who you are these are the top 10 people you should network with do you want me to connect you to, right hmm. these are the documents you should download because you know that kind of uh, you know relates to your profile you know because there were multi day so many parallel sessions and all that she would build an agenda basis your profile and say this is you know the way you should attend the conference so uh, i think that came in handy when you know to the brand also and to the customers so so yeah i think some of these things kept evolving and and as you would know uh, brands are always demanding so you know the yeah. request keeps coming in uh, all kind of requests we were crazy request you know there was <laughs> i i remember one request came in where uh, this was more in the metaverse space but i want to give the extent mm. of what people can yeah. is that can we actually somehow transfer smell uh, through the platform to show yeah. you know how the whole thing smells i said yeah, yeah some day maybe <laughs> so so <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that's what it is and since you mentioned it so the metaverse has been obviously 
the the popularization of it although vr <laughs> has been around for a while has obviously happened with the shift of like facebook literally rebranding itself to meta and and what mark zuckerberg yeah, yeah, has been talking yeah. about but a we kind of got into virtual events literally like what two years ago and then somewhere through that now there's a shift to like enhancing that even further um how do you see the metaverse really scaling up especially in terms of i would say the last year has been the most amount of buzz around the space but how have you seen that kind of fitting into this space in terms of an evolution uh, so so metaverse always existed from a terminology yeah. point of view, right yeah. it became famous when you know facebook decided to rebrand themselves and then start meta. talking meta yeah. and and verse you know we were very happy about it because we were already working on a similar concept so when said mm. you know metaverse we like okay fine we are maybe we are in the right direction right so mm. uh from a evolution point of view i think everyone is learning i don't think anyone has an idea about what metaverse would eventually look like or how it will evolve to yeah. finally be or you know where it will be i, I think that's that's how to, that's why i said it's more of a transition phase learning phase for everyone uh and uh, what i believe is it can do a lot more right i think uh, uh, there is a huge potential uh, on what is possible uh, in the metaverse if you take metaverse mm-hmm. as a concept not at what metaverse is being showcased currently right mm-hmm. i have a difference of opinion in in what metaverse is currently and uh, you know what it you know should be focused on uh, but i think the potential is limitless i think the the with with the 5g coming in whenever and how soon it comes in uh the internet experience becomes even better for a larger set of audience uh, i think it's it's it will unify a lot of things uh, you know for everyone not just for brands but for the consumer you know so overall and you know not just in india but i'm talking globally it it kind of opens up huge opportunity for uh, everyone I think everyone means everyone from from learning to healthcare to uh, corporates to commerce you know to entertainment socializing everything i think it kind of you know opens up a huge opportunity for mm-hmm. for all of these aspects mm-hmm. you know and because you you mentioned that and that's actually one of the things i actually noticed right and it's kind of running through some of the work that um we have done as an organization i constantly saw learning being something that was predominant which also was there uh, especially employee training etc um i also saw just in terms of just kind of organizations doing a lot of internal communication using it as well um so you had to pick a few examples and say that um because what people don't understand often times is when you hear about the metaverse but you don't know how that will actually play a role in your own life and your own organization um so you worry because all you see are these slightly big like the you're going to live your entire life in this space kind of conversations but the real world use cases is what most people don't really get so if you had to go little yeah. literal brass tacks and say okay this is the you know, some of the most like easy to plug into any organization kind of use cases what would those be so do you want me to kind of jump in on what others are doing or what we think would be the use case you know how would um, you want to do what you, you can go however you want to go yeah i'm okay, so the I, tell you. <laughs> uh, you know so uh, see there are two aspects to it from a, from where i see it uh, and then i'll try answering it in, in in those broader buckets so one is you know what metaverse stands for us from where we how we visualize it right uh, i think it's a concept Uh, it's it's a unified world uh, you know uh, on the cloud right? and uh, uh, you know what we are trying to do is make it simple accessible you know for everyone doesn't really uh, need to really have a tech savvy mindset for it you don't need to be a zen z only to a kind of consume it you can be you know uh, uh, millennials and and uh, maybe the uh, even even uh you know higher age guys who can yeah. basically uh, consume it so that's that's there right and the second part is how one can you know visualize it so i'll try giving a you know a visual aspect of it uh, you know uh, on a day a, you know maybe a varun's uh, day in life on metaverse yeah. right so uh, perfect uh, you know you kind of uh, log in you uh, you get in and you know there the first thing it starts as you know it plays a music that you know uh, 
that is more customized to you that okay hey varun uh, versa tells you that uh, this is the kind of music that i understand you like do you want me to play it you say yes and you you know you kind of get started with it the next step is okay uh, varun do you want to uh, go to your studio or you know uh, do you want to see what's new happening uh, on the metaverse uh, so there is an office space which is available where you know you say i operate from there and there is a space uh, you know for example there are brands who take up uh, office space uh, on our metaverse and saying okay we can get customers there and then you know so so varun says okay uh, instead of going to my studio first let me see what's new for uh, new happening and then uh, you know you kind of land up to a uh, you know based on your profile you land up maybe you like uh you know uh, retail therapy quite a bit so you land up in a uh, you know in a uh, tech uh, tech mall and where you are saying okay these are the three new products launched by different brands and uh you know which suits my profile do i want to uh, buy it you know and i can you know you see it in a 3d space you know turn it around uh, overall see the use cases of it uh, you know see different videos of of the whole product and say okay i want to add this in my wish list there's other tech product which is a little high end and you say i want to know more about it you click on it and you kind of uh, uh, you know schedule a meeting with the sales guy and say okay as per my calendar i am available at 12 pm so please call me and you know i want to know more about it and you click on it that gets blocked in your calendar and in the sales guy calendar right and and the third product you're so excited that you said i want to just you know it, it just looks very interesting i can go ahead and and, and just buy it so you click on it buy it you can either you know order it in a way that you will go and pick it up in the store or you say okay yeah you know uh, just deliver it to home so that's that's uh, one thing you do you finish that and then you say okay you know uh, there is a new art you know getting displayed here from uh, you know uh, Uh, old artworks of uh, MFO saying do you want to kind of go and see it you know and you jump in and you kind of literally are in a art gallery viewing art and uh, you know enjoying that uh, in in the music that that you like and an actual art environment that is there you finish that and and then comes in that you know when do you still want to go to office or mm. or you know there is <laughs> there is a small uh, you know in the virtual university there is a new course on how to uh, you know market your podcast better do you want to Uh, quickly go and have a 10 minute thing uh, say yes i don't mind it and then you jump into the virtual university uh, you know uh, learning center and you get into a room where you uh, you know you are uh, being told that okay next time when you do a uh, podcast how do you kind of really market to your audience and then you kind of finish that and then you then you are taken to your office where you kind of from there itself you know uh, uh, you are maybe doing your podcast you can invite your guests there and you know, finish your podcast and then you know after that uh, you know you want to grab a food you know log in order from one of the uh, food brands and then that gets delivered to your obviously physical office where you are uh, finish that you want to then move to a social networking platform where you you want to chat with your friends post it online you you finish that piece of it there's a movie theater uh, which is there which where you can do private screenings so you can decide choose your uh, movie that you want to see invite your friends who would you know join that room uh, you can chat and do a video call with them while you're watching movie in that platform uh, you know and uh, yeah that's that's how your uh, day goes so so all of it right is possible so from a in, if you look at an an individual's life uh, where all a person spends time right there's a uh there's a lot of learning that is required so there is a virtual university which has skill learning regular uh regular classes going on all of that stuff mm-hmm. then there's healthcare so we're talking about virtual clinics where you can actually provide medical you know uh, uh consultation from the best of doctors across you know all kind of uh, people right uh, there is mall there are showrooms there are theater there is entertainment zone there is uh, uh gaming zone there are events happening and, and you know for example yeah. uh, one thing that comes along while you are in your day is that okay here is a comedy show happening on the on the metaverse uh, on saturday do you want me to block your uh time for it and notify you you say yes and and then you know at 7 pm on saturday it notifies you when you kind of log in and you can, uh, attend the uh, you know comedy show which you can't physically go and do it because the 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 show is happening somewhere in uh, outside and you know you would mm. it's an artist that you want to see so so 
yeah, it all gets kind of uh, you know, for a consumer or an individual, it starts giving you that experience. And as we move on, it starts becoming more and more customized. What it means is, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, in a, a day when you enter, because the bot has learned about who you are, you might have your own virtual mall with only the products that you like, only the products that fit you as your profile. You only see that. You don't have to go and see, you know, 5,000 more products or search for it. You know that, okay, this is who I am and this is all that I like, right? So it, it gets there, right? It eventually gets there. So it's basically your world and slowly start becoming more and more your world customized to who you are, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's how a consumer would spend time there. No, you brought up a bunch of questions in my head, right? I'm just thinking, and this is like fully like broad strokes how we would kind of do this is um, at present moment, what I foresee would happen is that you would have multiple technologies, multiple bots basis the platforms because you might, for instance, your work might use a certain platform. The event might use a different one. Um, the university might go for another. So while you're talking for me, I was taking individual use cases of as a university, you can literally not have courses just for the people sitting here. It's not just virtual, it's you're more immersive. Um, you're talking about experience within an office in terms of meeting, etc. So just like instead of using like what we're using right now, which is still on a flat surface in that sense, when you're doing it online, you can actually be more immersed in it and so on and so forth. But at some point, I think it'll have to be how do you kind of bring multiple people trying to do this together? Um, and in, and in that case, how do you kind of make sure that the seamlessness of the bot knowing every part is what I think will be the bigger play, right? I mean, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, absolutely. I think uh, that's why I said it's a transition phase. It's an evolving phase. Uh, the more and more brands come online and then start accepting it and uh, you know, giving that experience to the customer, you will start, you know, the bot will learn, evolve. I think that evolution phase, we'll have to give that time. Whether it's a you know one year journey or a three year journey, uh, we'll we'll see how it all pans out, right? The sooner people come on board, it will be easier. Uh, but I see that not really being that complicated, right? Because uh, you know we've uh, you know there are bots which already exist. Plus, we also have you know Versa who can learn from who, you know learn your profile, right? And then do the matchmaking and do a lot of things which is possible. Uh, it is. The reason a bot is very important because it we are talking about a significantly large area, right? And if you had to kind of just keep roaming around yourself, you'll get lost, right? So hence, you know, uh, it, it kind of helps. But the other thing the bot does is also gives you feedback saying that, you know, this individual is also looking for something like this. And then we go back to a brand which, which maybe has that and try signing up you know, and get them here, saying that, you know, there is a requirement for this, why don't you, and then notify them that, you know, you were looking for this, here it is, the brand has come in, you know, do you want to be, you know, uh, do you want to go and connect with them? So, yeah, it, it's it's a journey, but it should be uh, should be interesting one. Also brings me to an interesting point of saying that what happens to the physical world uh, in that sense, right? As the more and more we spend time on it, is, I, I guess it's like how we spend more and more time on our phones and on the internet. Um, at some point, how do these two combine together? Because especially in a world that has reopened to whatever extent, and we keep hearing the fact that we right. might at some point, some parts of closures might kind of come in. We have seen also that the consumer and, and people do also want physical experiences. So how do these two kind of align together? I feel will be one of the core things. Like how do you, um, we make sure that it works, that it's not an either or, it's like how do they kind of work together? <laughs> Uh, I'll go back to a few years when, when you know, someone said Amazon is here and, and you know, uh, we can buy stuff mm -hmm. online and said, you know, yeah. who's going to buy online in India? You know, we like yeah. going to a nearby yeah. store and, and, you know, uh, looking at stuff and getting it right. And today, and feel you know, before I buy it and stuff like that. Absolutely. Right. And yeah. today, you know, uh, you know, we buy 99% of the stuff online. You know, I'm saying we even in since uh, uh, me as a family, right? Almost everything. And I can't, I couldn't imagine that that time, right? So, but, uh, you know, but we still like going to malls. We still like going to stores to kind of get that feel, right? So I feel that what 
metaverse would do or a world like i'm talking about would do is uh it would you know connect you more in, in in some sense i would not take it in the negative way because i think while people talk about we spend a lot of time on phone and on a social platform and all that i also believe that it is it has helped us connect with a larger audience you know uh, more than ever you know i you know i know a lot of people whom i would not connect for ages but because of the social platform i know what's happening in their life i know you know i can talk to them anytime it feels like i know them without really talking to them right yeah. so yeah. uh is the physical world going to go off never i think we humans will never let that go off you know as much yeah. as you know the technology side of it wants to kind of uh, make sure that you don't get up off your seat also is what i was telling you right the world created <laughs> yeah. but uh, but i think uh, what will happen is it it will kind of a hybrid model which which a lot of people are also talking about uh, uh, certain connections will you know the close ones will always be physical right for example to take work as a thing which is the most hottest topic that will people go back to work you know physical work or not right i was mm -hmm. in uh, us couple of weeks back and you know one one discussion that came up was that i think facebook uh, uh, apple and google have requested people to come back to office and there are guy mm -hmm. there are there are employees who filed a suit against them saying <laughs> you can't you can't get us to go back to office it is yeah. insane right so so that that piece is still uh, fairly complicated on how the whole work piece will happen right but uh, we've started getting people back to office while we mm -hmm. while we talk Same. about virtual and we have a, a office in the in our metaverse but uh, but i think that physical connect would always be there right that that piece will somewhere hybrid and then your uh, physical and then the internet or uh, the metaverse will all overlap and uh, we humans will figure out you know to take out time uh, for both of it i think 24 hours is, is a lot of time for us to do a lot of things exactly um i have a bunch more questions for you but i know we need to go in for a break so we'll quickly take that and be right back with our desk sure. instead Hello, hello, hello! It's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On the Habit Coach, author Aparna Piramal Raje shares with Ashton seven mental health therapies. The Simplified Gang discuss the Tata Group's recently released super app. On a sip of finance, Priyanka explains how inflation affects our households. On Tere Mere Raste's hundredth episode, Keshav takes us to Amritsar's beautiful Golden Temple. Keshav, congrats for the hundred episodes! Wow, that's A whole hundred episodes. Check them all out. And on Smarter with Sid, Siddharth sheds light on why Netflix lost over two hundred thousand subscribers in the first quarter of 2022. Do follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, do tell a friend. It really helps us out a lot. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platforms you're listening on, and you can also check us out on YouTube. We are also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and advertising on the network. We would really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it. It helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week: SBI Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and Jupiter, a digital banking app. Welcome back to Advertising is Dead. We're still talking to Piyush. Uh, Piyush, I want to take a step back from what we were speaking about. before the break which was we obviously went deep into metaverse you literally mapped out how our entire day in my life uh, <laughs> uh, might actually be if uh, you know as as things kind of scale up um, i want to kind of take a step back and ask you uh, your own journey and 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 the organization's journey from uh, what used to be a services business towards the whole marketing technology and the virtual events and now the metaverse space um, i'd love to hear that because i feel that also kind of shows how businesses are evolving towards what is almost the newer side of of technology and marketing sure sure so i'll, I'll jump into the corporate side of it or the company side of it mm -hmm. so uh, yeah for the longest you know we've we've been in the marketing services business helping brands reach out to their customers more physically than than virtually right that's mm -hmm. it yes we've been doing digital marketing for a while but uh, uh, there is still a lot of physical connect that we were doing right and uh, uh what uh just before covid hit us we were trying to figure out uh, you know uh, if we were to enhance the experience online what do we do and mm -hmm. you know uh, 
one thing I realized, and then this is something which you realize when you, you know, maybe travel a lot more and talk to a lot more. I think uh, I learn most from from uh, meeting people. You know, I think mm-hmm. uh, uh, it's the biggest source for my my learning so far. And what I realized was that you know, while services exist and will continue to exist, there was a you know core requirement of how do you kind of you know take marketing services uh, to online how do you kind of make sure that the connect online is a lot more uh, uh, meaningful for people than what it was uh, earlier right uh, you know people are spe- people were spending a lot of time in all kind of stuff online but uh, engagement online was you know uh, focus engagement was was uh, missing right so for us we say you know uh, we, we had a choice of, you know, when pandemic hit us, uh, should we continue to focus on services and, uh, you know, uh, hope that things will become okay, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that time, you know, when when first someone called me and said, you know, things are going to be bad, I said, okay, how bad? One quarter and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. on a higher side, one quarter, right? That's about yeah. it. You know, yeah. uh, That's what we all thought. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we said, okay, while that happens, and then, then that will question coming, okay, if it is not more than one quarter, then what would we do? Right? Mm. That is when, you know, we said, okay, let's start pivoting a little bit and, and start uh, getting people online. We've been talking about it. How can we do it? Right? Mm. I think that's, uh, we listen to people, listen to our customers, a lot of them bigger brands because they were more coming from an international mindset. They said, you know, uh, I think this is going to be a little longer, so let's start uh, moving online. Right? Hmm. And that's where we said, okay, let's start work on it. What we did was we accelerated the journey. The product, which generally would, would take about two years to come, we said, okay, let's kind of do it in six months and then be ready with it. Right? Uh, that's where the pivot for us started. And when we tasted that, from a point of view that, okay, what technology can basically do you know when you marry the services piece with the technology right i think uh, you know it kind of just scales up uh, you know from a value add point of view i'm not really talking from a business point of view but uh, you know the efficiency efficiencies that it brings in right uh, i think in these two years the amount of uh, you know networking people have had and amount of learning people have had from speakers globally from uh, you know, content providers globally. I have not seen it ever, right? Every mm-hmm. time when you are doing a services piece of it, there is that limitation of how many people you can connect with, who, yeah. whom can you learn from and all that. Mm-hmm. I think that mm-hmm. that's it. So mm-hmm. hence, you know, I mean, for us, transitioning from services to technology kind of uh, helped us open that mindset. And I believe that everyone should do it. In fact, mm-hmm. I was, you know, in a conference, uh, you know, again, a couple of weeks back in US and, uh, one thing that came out was that you know everyone is saying you know i can do everything but mm. you know moving to technology is always you know a big leap you know because yeah. there is an investment there is you know okay will it work or not who's going to come in there are so many people already but i think there is always that niche right and everyone mm. who's in the services space should should move, should you know not move out of the service space but have that element of tech it kind of opens up uh, you know uh, your mindset in a, in a huge way i think that's how our transition has been and uh, uh, the other thing is you keep getting feedback right so obviously pandemic yeah. was more of a forced thing of you know okay you just need to focus on technology because that's you know uh, that's where everyone is uh, you know going to be right uh, now when when things have opened up right we had a choice of saying okay do we kind of go back to the services yeah. piece only or do we kind of uh, make sure that we continue to scale this up and grow right and we've taken a conscious choice of saying okay you know let's scale it up and not really go back to only doing services right and that's mm-hmm. why we kind of uh, uh, set up a stronger team in us to only focus on the technology business and, and scale that up right so 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 that's how we've kind of uh, transitioned and now now if you look at it there are two two bigger buckets for the organization. One is the marketing services business and the other is Wasmos, under which all our tech stuff will be. And we, you know, it is surprising that we're saying this. I, I don't think I would have said this, you know, a couple of years back, that we have a technology roadmap of what mm. we want to achieve in the next mm. three years time frame, right? Mm. Which is which which is phenomenal, right? So that's that's how I would say and I would 
definitely urge everyone to experience this uh, for sure and and what about your own journey um, i i feel that um especially in points of transition like this um someone who's at a you know obviously even even pre this as well like from a leadership point to kind of evolving things kind of holding things together but also like really putting something which is very future centered forward how is how have you kind of like seen that transition within yourself so oh, i've enjoyed it so one is i i'm i'm a individual which is very restless so i'm fairly restless i get bored uh, very soon you know mm-hmm. it's that thing of uh, okay i've done this now what next for me that what next is very important uh, i think that's that's kind of uh, helped me uh, come where where i am so you know i i started off uh, i mean i don't know want to bore you out but i i started off as an operations guy in this organization you know and that also you know i was bored with my previous job and i said okay i will take anything that comes my way anything mm-hmm. right and there was a friend who was an hr head out here he said yeah there is you know there's this role available do you want to join in uh, i came for for role for uh, you know came for an interview for a role he said no no that is gone now there is this available do you want to take it i said okay fine let's just do, do it right i did that for a year then transitioned it to you know a business role after another year then 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 so and so forth so i kept kind of you know that's who i am as an individual right and i think uh that's where uh it helped us you know at least me uh from a mindset of uh, when covid happened you know i was very sure that we didn't wanted to kind of uh, go down from a revenue or a profit point of view so as an organization if you look at it you know a significant amount of money of ours would come or revenue would come in from a services business which is more physical right in mm-hmm. in 2020 or or the financial year 21 rather 2021 right we did more profit than previous year right and then and next mm-hmm. year's uh, more so we've kind of you know and the reason uh, i have enjoyed the transition is because you know it kind of get me thinking what next so so and hence the metaverse also has come up because yeah. you know after we've done virtual and we've kind of spoken to you know uh, people globally about virtual events and showed them what we can do it was it was you know it, trust me the first few months when we were giving demos to people showing the virtual platform uh, and people saying wow we've not seen something like this you know i can't tell you the satisfaction that was that was there and this was globally right uh, mm-hmm. uh, so that happened but you know again you know who i am about 7 8 uh, months from there on i said this is done you know what next what do we do next what what is more possible in the online space and i remember last 2020 october or, or maybe december time i told someone that we should you know build a mall online right mm-hmm. and and i was laughed at saying that this guy has gone crazy because you know uh, <laughs> who will you know you have an amazon you have this why would someone go to your mall and buy it right mm. and and then i for some reason i believe that maybe i am crazy so i kind of you know uh, stop talking about it for a while right uh, but uh, you know that that thought was there and then then we spoke to a lot more people and then you know uh, what came out was there was an inherent need of you know uh, making learning more experiential making mm. buying more experiential you know uh, uh communicating with people a little more experiential and hence we said okay let's start you know now working on this aspect of it there are times when you just you know put your foot down and say i don't want to listen to anyone we just just yeah. go ahead with exactly. what you think is i think that's who i am you know when i believe in something i'm very sure about it then i just go ahead with it and that's how the transition piece has happened for us and i've, I've enjoyed it you know i i enjoy every day on on putting this whole technology piece together and imagining a world where you know people like you can spend a lot more time uh, on this but not just you know be there but the platform adds value to your life uh, overall i think that's that's the you know vision that i am you know or i'm envisioning something like that happening you know, hopefully sometime soon you know as you were talking also thinking about the fact that as these pieces have really evolved so have the opportunities just from a career standpoint for people right i mean you look at it um what you would expect as roles within organizations uh who worked in martech who uh, worked in marketing worked on the technology side now all the an experiential all kind of coming together have opened up so many more options so if i was someone who was like just getting out of college right now or someone who's has been working in one of these spaces and say okay 
where could my future really lie um what are you seeing as opportunities for careers which maybe weren't even popularly there in the last before the last 2 3 years um and what kind of skill sets are you largely would you not largely look at when you hire for these mm-hmm. uh, from a if you look at from an opportunity point of view right uh, imagine a industry which doesn't exist or, or or a small industry becoming a 600 billion dollar or 700 billion dollar industry right is significant there is a data which says that on metaverse you know uh, you know jp morgan study says that they're expecting about 1 trillion dollar transaction happening on metaverse right so mm. uh, so from 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 something which doesn't exist to go into that scale obviously it kind of opens up a plethora of uh, opportunities for everyone right and i believe that uh, you know the younger kids who are coming out of college you know uh, i think they can you know uh, add so much value to the whole piece of it right uh, in in all aspects of it right and i'll i'll kind of break it into different aspects of it for example we hire a lot of people from Uh, you know a uh, communication background right because uh, what is required is when you are trying to talk about you know you know different aspects of metaverse uh, to uh, a certain set of uh, audience right it is very important to understand that lingo right which with these guys coming out of college would know a lot more than someone with a 7 10 15 years of experience right they would be able to communicate right so that's one set of opportunity that comes up with you know a uh, big way from a communication and marketing standpoint of view from uh, you know for the individuals right uh, the other aspect is you know a lot of uh, sales related stuff will come in right which brands to kind of sign up why would should should they be part of it right if one is signed up how do i get the other part of it that's there right and the third is the technology obviously i think uh, you know uh, from uh, if you look at from a technology point of view from basic dot net to you know uh, sql to uh, to your uh, react or an angular right uh, that's there and then eventually it will move on to uh, you know some people are working on it on unity and webgl and stuff you know it just kind of opens up you know you don't have talent available you know for it so you know uh, we are trying to go back to universities and tell them that you know this is where we need uh, you know uh, people right and why don't you kind of bring introduce these courses and we'll be happy to introduce those courses uh, uh, you know from our end and uh, help students learn while they are uh, you know studying also uh, the regular courses so that when they come out of college they are the better prepared for the world plus the other thing which does and for us this is worked beautifully is uh, we've hired a lot of young kids and then we've put mm. them on global roles uh mm. and uh, you won't imagine uh, how beautifully they've adapted to you know the culture in different countries right because i i think these guys are exposed to a lot more right when they come yeah. out of the college yeah, sure. so uh so hence for them to interact with someone in 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 us or in the uk or or you know in the apac region is so much easier because they they just understand that uh, you know uh, the bro and the bra concept of you know <laughs> whether you're talking to a us or the uk guys which i'm still learning honestly right so uh, <laughs> so uh, so so i i i think it just kind of you know there's so much that's possible from each of these angles based on where you are coming from right and for us what we are seeing and then again i i think that will how it will uh, function is you know you will have someone uh, who will join in or a set of people who join in who will only focus on how to make learning online better right mm. then there will be people who will come in and saying how to make sure you know retail better so so the retail institutes which kind of are you know preparing kids to join retail uh, you know stores right mm-hmm. would now start saying okay if you want to manage it online how would you do it right uh there's a huge requirement for uh, people coming from psychology background mm. because you have to you know learn how to make sure that varun stays longer on the platform mm. so that's there right uh, so that's another aspect of it for example and i'll, I'll take a few seconds more to kind of tell you what happened today so i was telling some telling the tech team today that you know imagine if you are on the platform mm-hmm. and you come in and someone you know uh, and you you kind of do an activity and so it's you are awesome right mm. 
you're fabulous. Now, you suddenly get so much attracted to saying that, okay, I don't know when did I, someone last told me that, right? Because, mm. you know, uh, more so in India and uh, not in the bad sense, but that's who we are. I think that appreciation culture is not that much, right? We kind of, you know, hesitate to, you know, go and say, oh, well done. Yeah. You've, you've done a good job for, for, for smaller things also, right? Leave the larger, larger ones, for the larger ones also, leave the smaller ones, right? Yeah. Uh, and hence, when a, when, a, when a platform tells you, you're like, okay, this is, I, I have to keep going there, right? So that's where the psychology piece comes in. So a lot of psychology students getting an opportunity in something like this. So yeah, it's, 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 it's huge from an opportunity point of view for, for our students. You know, and I think what's also super exciting is that there's been so much movement in this sector over the last two years. Um, and it seems to only be getting faster in terms of evolution and more things kind of happening there. What are you most excited about for the next, let's say, year or year, couple of years in this space? So obviously, the, the future has a lot more coming up. But if you look at like more near futures in next year, two years, what are you going to see as most exciting trends really coming up, which um, in a way that are going to be something we see before we even realize it? So uh, something similar that I mentioned to you, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, all kind of people going online and uh, you know so what i'm very excited about and, and uh, is making learning more experiential online right how do you kind of you know uh, make sure that when you are online uh, so there is a concept of uh, not getting the word but learning through distraction right mm -hmm. so nowadays there is a study that is done that you know if you do a player content for a little longer right and then it just you know, uh, uh, playing, uh, people will get bored, right? So mm. in a virtual environment, you can actually, you know, go away from it. Your learning can be a lot more, you know, uh, immersive than just... So I see that that kind of, that trend uh, picking up uh, in, a, in a bigger way, if you look at it. And uh, the other piece which I'm super excited about, and I don't know whether it's going to be six months or one year, is when when someone logs into a platform and then that platform is customized to who you are, right? Every aspect of it is, oh, I love this. Oh, yes, this, you know, this this signage is talking to me. Oh, I this is a product I always wanted to buy. Oh, this mm. is this is a movie I always wanted to see. So so yeah, it's kind of you know a more mass customization. A world which is you know customized for every individual that comes in rather than you know for a bunch of people or a group of people so yeah i i see that kind of being more exciting from where i see it yeah i think the, the customization actually is the most exciting part also because um one of the biggest problems on the internet at least web 2 uh has been the fact that just finding things now because there's so much out there it takes you because there's so much out there it takes you so much <laughs> longer to really find something and access it um, and that becomes the problem. Very true. Very true. Very true. Um, so towards the later part of the show, I actually do um, actually ask all my guests a set of questions which have nothing to do with what we've spoken about so far. Um, the idea is to end off on a note where people get to know a little bit more about you uh, before we close things off. So um, <laughs> what do you spend a lot of time doing outside of the metaverse, which is anyway where you seem to be residing a lot in terms of work? Uh, outside of work, <laughs> what keeps you excited? Uh, what um, what do you spend a lot of time doing outside of work that keeps you excited and and keeps you as um, I would say involved? You know, uh, I get inspired by movies. So if I get time, I think that's the next thing I would do is to kind of uh, uh, you know watch all kind of movies. I, I think I'm a, I'm a movie buff in that sense. So yes, I would, I would do a lot more. It, it just you know it takes me a different zone altogether. I, I, it's very difficult for me to explain that, but yes, I enjoy that. Um, anything that you watched, uh, maybe even read or listened to recently that you'd recommend? <sighs> I, from a read point of view, I, I read a, a book called, uh, you know, uh, Thinking Clearly or uh, Art of Thinking uh, Clearly. I, I, you know, I can get that right. I thought it was beautiful. It kind of every chapter, uh, you know, gave you a perspective of how you looked at things and what's the other way to look at things. You know, I, I think it was uh, just beautiful. And in terms of something you watched, uh, because which which inspired you, which made you feel like this is something yeah. which 
Final Push I, I, yeah, I, I watched the on Netflix. I watched uh, the Last Dance. You know, uh, mm. I think this is of Michael the, Jordan. The Michael Jordan. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was. I, I loved it. It was beautiful. You know, the whole whole journey and and how you know how one person inspired you know a generation. So many. It was yeah. Beautiful. Um. My last question, generally, with all my guests, is actually an evolution of the name of the show itself. So, um, why do you think, as we start to live our lives in the metaverse and virtually, why do you think that living our lives in the metaverse will not die? Will the life not die, or the metaverse not die? Why will the metaverse not die? Like, because we, will that, since we're going there, why do you think that will not like not happen? If that's the way to put it. You know, uh, see anything that is new, it takes a little while to die, right? And everything has an <laughs> age to it, right? So, so I, I think uh, just for the sheer, sheer size of it, I think it can it will it last a little longer than others, right? But I think there will always be a, a expiry date. Something new will come in, something more will evolve. So, uh, yeah, I would not say that it would it would not die. But uh, what happens, you know, ten years from now, it's it's very difficult to say that. But uh, till then, it is here to stay, and uh, for sure, it's going to create a lot of excitement in 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 the life of individual, and, and that's what we are aiming for. Thanks a ton, Piyush. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for coming on the show and and almost like immersing all of us into the <laughs> world, which you will. It feels like we're already a part of it, but I think it's going to become more and more an obvious part of our lives. So thank you so much for sharing everything that you've shared. Oh, thank you, thank you for having me. I think uh, you know I loved the conversation episode. I was not sure how you know how I would be able to showcase something which you have not seen. Right? It's it's mm-hmm. the most difficult part of it, but I have hoped that through this, you know, you and and all the listeners are able to visualize, mm-hmm. you know, what what is the world that we're talking about. So I had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, thanks for having me. Same here. Same here. Thanks so much, Piyush. Uh, thanks for coming on. Everything is dead.